Our first movie is Star Trek Nemesis. Now, I must confess that I am not now, nor have I ever been, a Trekkie, a Trekker, or even a Trek head. I appreciate, but I'm not consumed by this franchise. But even if you've never seen an episode of the TV series and its spin-offs or any of the previous feature films, Star Trek Nemesis stands alone as an engaging intergalactic thriller with a lot of spirit and some rousing action scenes. Once again, Patrick Stewart brings real grace and presence to his role as Captain Jean-Luc Picard, the father figure leader of the USS Enterprise. And Brent Spiner is excellent as the nearly human android known as Data. The Romulans have historically been enemies of the Federation, but now their new leader claims he wants a truce. Perhaps it's time to add some illumination to our discussion. Computer, raise the lighting four levels. And that's Tom Hardy as Shinzon, who has a unique and unsettling connection to Captain Picard. We are a race bred for war and conquest. Are you ready to plunge the entire quadrant into war to satisfy your own personal demons? It amazes me how little you know yourself. I'm incapable of such an act. You are me! Directed by Stuart Baird, Star Trek Nemesis has some pretty nifty special effects and some cheesy but fun retro touches, like the tracking shots of the Enterprise in space, the scenes of the crew bouncing around when the ship is attacked, and the obligatory shooting sparks and loose wires on the ship after a tough battle. I also enjoyed the romance between Commanders Riker and Troy, and the whimsical touches Spiner brings to his dual android role as Data and a Data wannabe. I also liked Hardy as the evil villain. Nemesis is a worthy addition to the Star Trek Federation of movies. Well, I'm not a Trekker either, but I have seen these movies since forever, and I think it's time for a retread. I think the series is out of gas. I'm telling you, first of all, I get so tired of these scenes where they sit around in their command module, which looks like basically the security guard station for a modern high rise. Oh, come on, it looks a lot while better sparks, than that. While sparks come in from either side, yeah, but that's and they're fun. talking about their protective shield. Oh, it's down to 80% of the front, it's down to 10% of the back. Oh, yeah, I've been come watching on. this now for 15 years. Why don't they get some new batteries for that shield? Well, they do have some new batteries, and they have some new toys, and they have some fun I mean, chase scenes. Be, I get so tired that's of this. The fun and of another this. thing. The, they didn't do as much as they could have with Data and his double. Oh, they I did, thought they, they did have plenty had more with, fun that. with that. And they had some neat twists and turns because you don't know which one is which. And I think Spiner is good at creating these I'll two characters. I, I also like that the villain is sort of like a mirror image of Picard. Uh, so you have two du no. dual things going on there. So I you think, say, no. oh, it's a bad looking set. And they're just looking at the one radar thing saying, oh, our power's down. That's not well, giving us Well, the crash between the two ships wasn't too spectacular either. I'll tell you, yeah. I think it's time for them to jump another thousand years in the future get an entirely new crew, redesign the ship, okay. and get some aliens who don't look like people with too much makeup on. Oh, well, you know what? You create the next, 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 next generation of Star Trek. I think this one is worth watching. With great happiness, I will do that.